what's it like when you go to the track? You know, you buy a ticket, you go to the event, what do you get? Hello everyone and welcome. I'm your host James. Today we're going to talk about something interesting. What's it like when you go to the track? You know, you buy a ticket, you go to the event, what do you get, really? So we're going to look at three different sanctioning bodies. We're going to look at IMSA, IndyCar, and we're going to look at NASCAR as well. The top three American like racing divisions. We're going to break it down basically by the race uh, venue, you know, where it's exactly located and, 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 and how that affects, you know, the type of race it is, as well as the cars that participate in the race. Um, we're going to look at ticketing options, which look into seating arrangements, you know, fan accessibility, and overall pricing. And then finally, we're just going to summarize and gauge the value of everything that you get with your dollar. So, let's get to it. IMSA. Uh, we're going to look at the last race I went to, which was um, not the Rolex 24. We're going to look at Road Atlanta, the multiple Petit Le Mans. Do you eat some peanut butter or something? Yeah, you sound like a dog with peanut butter on the roof of your mouth. See, Road Atlanta, it's just north of Atlanta, about like, you know, 40 minutes or so. Uh, it's a 12-turn course. It's about over like two and a half miles. It has some of the most beautiful elevation you'll see in a, in a in a road course or any course in the world it's it's a variable type of racing because it is road racing and it's IMSA so in IMSA racing they race in the rain they'll get put on some rain tires and just go drive uh, so if you're a spectator you will have to prepare for the elements uh, rain cold wind extreme heat it, it'll it'll hit you at a sports car race but with that, it being it's such a big track uh, out in the open, you have so much to see and so many places to go and spectate the race, which is uh, just amazing because you get different angles. You know, you only can get so much from, you know, your one seat at the football stadium where you're at home and you're looking at all the different camera angles. At an IMSA race, you can kind of get that. You know, you can go watch it one turn and then go to another turn. You know, uh, tracks have these famous iconic sections and people can you know if they want they spend an hour in one section and they you know transport themselves to the other section so there's a lot of a lot of things to see as far as the race uh, goes next we're gonna look at IndyCar IndyCar uh, this race we're gonna look at is the most recent race the street of St. Pete uh, that's my home race uh, that was cool I got to go to that this year um, kind of wasn't on assignment so it was like a fan so basically what that was was a street course in St. Pete Florida in downtown St. Pete it was a 14 turn street course um, and it was like in a little taste of Monaco kind of I've been to Monaco uh, I not during the Grand Prix you know you go through some of the iconic sections where you see the the rumble strips on the track and you're like this is the down this is the uphill section oh this is you, your mind is blown because you look at it and it's like this is monaco this is it this is the downhill this is the braking zones these are the tire marks from the pirellis or from you know whatever's been on there it's it's uh it's quite honoring to to be there so to have that track be in those regards it's it's quite humbling uh for, for this country to, to have that, especially for uh, IndyCar. Um, IndyCar is, is known kind of to be more exotic, and now it's it's got some of those things, kind of like F1, where, you know, you know these are posh, exotic locations you've got to go to. Um, but it's stereotypical Florida weather, beautiful, sunny. As you see, I got an epic tan from my, my days out there, uh, and proper UV protection and sunscreen. Thank you, Sunbum. Shameless plug. That time of year, March, is just perfect. Uh, if, if you can miss the rain season, uh, I think IndyCar can continue to like run that race and they'll have a really great turnout. There's a lot of things around the track that help provide shade, actually. you know, Not just saying that that's beautiful weather, but you have this beautiful Florida breeze coming from the Gulf. Uh, and then you have this uh, the shading that's provided by a lot of the city elements, you know, the trees that run in the park, and also the, the buildings and stadiums that 
the course runs around uh, help provide you know some ample shading for the fans to help cool them off so it's not super hot. And finally, NASCAR. NASCAR, yeah! So we're gonna go to the the best track to go see a race, in my opinion. Talladega Super Speedway. I might be a little biased because I saw my first race there about 10 years ago. Last year I went back for the 1,000 light bulbs, uh, 500. Uh, kind of just be like, hey, 10 years later, I'm coming back to Talladega. Talladega is a super speedway. Not just any kind of speedway. A super speedway. It's based in Alabama. It's it's basically just right off the interstates and highways, so it's just like a straight shot. Like, you know, someone from a, a, a gas station can tell you the directions to get to Talladega. It's kind of funny. Uh, it's a four-turn D-shaped uh, super speedway that has 33 degrees bank, so, you know, it's it's massive. These, these turns are just... You, you drive up to it and you see these like mound, mound hills and it's like, what is that? What, what is going on here? It's like, that's Talladega. That's the house of Ricky Bobby right there. It, it, it really gives you a perspective of scale, especially if you stand with inside of the track, if you're on it and you're just like, this is immensely wide. You think the interstate's wide and you go to that track and you're like, what? It's just amazing what, what that speedway does. And the, the weather was beautiful. October in, at, in Alabama and just in the South, it's a little hotter, but you know, it's not humid, which is which is what's nice, you know. You don't get that humidity hot that you do in Florida. It still cools down in the evening and it's cool in the morning, so it's not super bad of a race. Now that we've broke down the tracks, let's break down basically what it costs to go to a race. And here's how we're gonna break it down. We're gonna try to make a general mission purchase. And as a fan, we want you know, access to the pits, we want to maybe go to the garages, check out some cars, maybe the superstars behind them, and from there, you know, maybe we'll have some money for some food, of course, because we have to survive at these events, and, uh, you know, you got to park your car, probably, and whatever booking fees that might come with it. So, yeah, we'll tab all that on, and we'll create a purchase estimate. Here we go, an IMSA ticket. So for a one day general mission, like super ticket, as they say it for like the main day for a weather tech race is probably like $85, I'd say, if you're like cutting it close and it's like uh, past all the early, you know, advanced pricing. If you, if you have to pay the massive amount, that's what you'd be paying. Uh, with that $85 purchase, that ticket is actually your pre-race garage pass as well. That's what's nice about IMSA. It's, you, you get to walk the paddock, you get to see what's going on, you get to check out the cars, the superstars, and you get to go on the, the pits and the pre-grid uh, an hour before the race and check out everything, and they have a big spectacle. All the drivers are out there, the, the, the crews are out there, and it, it, everyone's so personable, and it's really just a nice, engageable experience for everyone involved, uh, you know, kids, you know, become fans for life, adults get to rekindle their love for like the passion of the cars. It's just, it's a great experience uh, overall. And with that too, you know, it doesn't mean you have like a seat anywhere. So you can go anywhere on the track and you know, like we're saying, Road Atlanta is a big track. You have so many cool places you can go and check out some turns. You can check out the straightaways, walk over the bridge and feel the cars like whiz by you. Um, so that's a great, you know, aspect of it too. And plus there's a lot of, you know, typical vendors, you know, carnival things, activities and 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 just simple ways to, you know, help stimulate your your yourself. Not just yourself, but the whole family too. I mean, it's just um, additional fees you might incur. Okay, you might incur a big parking fee there. If you want to bring your car inside the track, some tracks might charge you about $50 for like an infield parking pass. Now that does mean you have your own transportation to go around the track. Uh, you can normally park off site uh, and there's usually like a shuttle service or like some kind of tram or something that'll allow you to get to the track and from there, you know, there might be trams within it or, you know, services that you can go, but they might get backed up. Something uh, I always recommend is bring a bike, uh, bring some kind of like transportation, bring your scooter, you know, anything. If it, Read up on the rules too of, of your of your track to make sure that you can bring a two-wheeled vehicle and exactly where those two-wheeled vehicles are allowed and also if there's uh, parking too for them you know if they have bike racks 
on site so you can bring a chain, lock it up, boom, you're ready to go, watch you know the race, and you don't have to carry your bike around everywhere, so or your scooter or whatever, and it's it's a great value. So if you're looking to miss that fifty dollar purchase and you don't mind a hike and a good walk, or bringing your bike or any other means of transportation, it's well worth it. Because, uh, of course, with a probably $5 service fee and another $20 on average for food and drinks for yourself, we bring that out to about $110 to uh, $160. Not too bad for one day, full day experience. Because uh, this race is 10 hours long, okay? 10 hours of racing. So you're probably there. If you, if you really want to enjoy the whole thing, you may be there for like 12 hours. You know, probably two hours before the race maybe an hour and a half, and then like half an hour after, and then you leave because you let everybody else go, because it gets pretty packed too, so that's uh, another aspect of it too. With all of those people there, you have a really great environment. You get like friendly people everywhere. Everyone's happy, everyone's having a good time in an IMSA event, so that's always nice to see. Okay, IndyCar, IndyCar at the streets of St. Pete. So, this weekend, a general mission ticket was $50 for a general mission ticket, and you basically just got in with that and you can go check out what you could check out that was there if you wanted a pit pass that was also like a garage pass as well on sunday uh that was forty dollars so yeah a little add on there um but with that you got access to a pre-race like you know walk the grid you know the drivers were coming by on you know trucks you got to see them but also they were out and about uh, IndyCar and a lot of their vendors had the drivers out doing meet and greets uh, Rossi was just hanging out at a Tag Heuer thing just like literally handing out autographed hero cards and posing for photos in his in his suit so it was really cool to see that aspect uh, you know Sebastian Bourdais was around town a lot all weekend he was at an event I was uh, out with my team too um, in downtown on Friday night too, signing autographs, you know, being personable. So there's a lot of cool th aspects throughout the weekend, but just for that Sunday, yeah, you had a lot of cool aspects just for getting a general mission ticket and getting that $40 pit pass, you could get a lot of access to the drivers and the teams. Um, you could watch pretty much from anywhere. There were grandstands, and obviously if you had a grandstand ticket, you could be in that grandstand. So there were some areas you couldn't be, some areas you could be, because if the grandstands weren't really sold out, security wouldn't mind you being there. But you also had all those carnival rides and fun events and games and cool things. And it was a city, so you had interesting places you can go and watch. You know, you could watch from outside the track. You didn't even have to buy a ticket if you wanted to. You could just walk up and just chill on a building and watch. So it was kind of fun to, to see spectators all over the, the place. And you can also watch from yachts too. They had a, a, a bridge that went over into the bay and hooked up to a yacht docking, like just like a dock with yachts. And there was like a, a pontoon with like drinks and you know vendor stuff. And then after that, there was like yachts with people and some people were inviting people on just having a good time. So really cool to see. Uh, with additional fees, probably like we said, another Fifteen dollars for parking, you know, variable. You know, it could vary, but average will will say that mean is fifteen dollars. Uh, Twenty dollars for food and drinks, and maybe a five dollar fee. We'll total that out to a hundred and thirty dollars for an Indy car race day. Not too bad, as well. You know, if you want to bring some money for some souvenirs too, for both of those, I would as well, because uh, they have some cool souvenirs. They're just a little pricier than most. Um, but still, it's it's like a it's a it's a great thing to, to go see an Indy car race. They're really fun and they're really cool, uh, and and you get a perspective too because like the sports cars are much louder than the Indy cars, just so you know. Uh, NASCAR, so the Thousand Light Bulb 500. So there's no such thing as really a general mission ticket much anymore. You have to have like some kind of section seat in a grandstand because you're at a, a race track, a stadium track. So yeah. I had to buy a grandstand ticket that cost me $145 because I bought that very, very late. Like, I want to say two days before the race, I bought my ticket. So, yeah, $145. Uh, I also bought a pre race pass because I didn't know if I would be able to get on pit road and I kind of wanted to because I did my first time and that would have been cool. So, I bought an $80 pre race pass. I didn't actually use any of that stuff. I kind of like just, you know, snuck around with the pass. 
like, you know, you just take your pass and you just, you show it to people, you're just like, and 90% of the people there are volunteers, so like, yeah, I mean, if you're smooth, you can get by, but I'm not saying you should do that at all, no, I mean, don't, do not attempt that, you know, I don't advise things like that. There was like some, you know, pre-race concerts going on and, you know, you could walk the, the garage and they had like a, a rope section where like drivers were coming to the driver's meeting and you can meet them and like have them sign autographs. So there were some cool little aspects for fans and a lot of engagement things. Uh, I know NASCAR and Talladega are revamping a lot of that stuff for the fans in the infield. So that should be really cool to see um, this year for, for fans. But, you know, there wasn't much of that when I went. There was just one food truck or vendor kind of in there and then maybe a couple other things and then it was just like fuel pumps, garage stalls, you know, it was all business still. It's a very traditional track. I uh, went to my seat, enjoyed the race uh, from my seat after, you know, sneaking around and getting secret access to the track. The access you get is just very limited with a NASCAR race. I mean, you just get your seat, the initial things that are in front of the track. It, some tracks, if you have in field access like say Daytona with with its infield and you buy like a, a fan zone pass you get more with that when I used to go I used to buy like a backstretch pass and get a fan zone pass for a little more money and I would just hang out in the fan zone the, enti the entire time and not go to the backstretch that was kind of like general missions you know back in the day like I don't know when they had backstretch seating not too long ago so with additional fees a ten dollar servicing fee from whoever I guess it's the speedway that does it. I mean, you're probably going to look at $20 for parking on a... I mean, if you're just going to like try to park really close to the track. I didn't pay that. I parked inside the track. You know, you said earlier, you just kind of like flash it and you're good. $20 for food and consumptions. Uh, it's going to bring it out to $275 for one NASCAR race. Uh, well, in the end, I say just... Go see a race live. Yeah, all those look good. For under $300, if you're just going to go see one race uh, for yourself. So you get a lot of racing for your dollar with the IMSA, seeing how it's a 10-hour race compared to the equal, you know, three to four-hour IndyCar and NASCAR race. Um, there's a lot to see, too, because, you know, you're not having to spend any additional money on a garage pass or any other access pass so you can actually spend your money elsewhere though it is a little difficult if you're gonna to try to park inside the track you know probably if you're going with a group of friends it's a really great value to do the IMSA ticket uh, you know, go with a group of friends camp in there or you know all walk together so you're all miserable together and you're not just like doing it alone um, there's a lot of value there IndyCar as well I mean it the, the price point being as low as it is is really good and they actually have some pretty uh, comparable children's tickets uh, being $25 for Sunday tickets and the pit passes only being an additional $30 for kids 12 and under so that's a great aspect you see NASCAR having a solid aspect with that having you know 12 and under you're free at the Xfinity and truck races but doesn't translate over to the, the cup race I mean there is some discounts but I mean it's it, it's just a it's, a it's a good discount but you know still like you're spending a lot for the seats because you're it's a seat I mean that's what you're paying for and it, there used to be a joke where you paid for the seat and you never sat in it and yeah I would say that used to be the case but like everyone around me definitely wasn't standing up so you don't want to be rude and stand in front of somebody who's <laughs> trying to sit down and enjoy the race so it is what it is um but if you ever get like a NASCAR hot pass or like a, a ticket to go on a pit road while you're at the race, do it. Road is, is something else. And for all three of these series, I would, I would recommend that. But like also be careful because there are people working on pit roads, so don't get in people's ways. Um, you know, I'm not saying you're gonna make or break the race, but you know, we don't need you to get hurt being on pit road when you kind of shouldn't be. So mind yourself. For the NASCAR value, yeah, to, to have multiple people, that's quite a lot of money. Uh, but still, I mean, not bad. You can go to a race for under $300 uh, for just tickets. That doesn't include gas. 
Um, gas is, yeah, that's another thing. But yeah, you should go buy a ticket and go to a race this year. A NASCAR race, an IMSA race, an IndyCar race, maybe go Formula E, or, you know, you could go to Formula One, That that's cool. Um, you know, Trans Am, Trans Am's cool. HSR, yeah, you want to go to have some fun, go to HSR race, see some old cars racing. You can see stock cars, see a Porsche 962 on track, and then like, bam, like, Morgan McClure, number four, Chevy Lumina. It's like, what? Damn. Yeah, just go, go, go to see a race live. But yeah, that's a breakdown of a race ticket analysis. And that's what it costs to go to a race. But have a great week, everyone.